How in the world is it that a privately owned institution with no allegiance to anyone except for their stockholders, their shareholders, controls the money of an entire nation? Hello, YouTubers. Alaska Prepper here. Happy Monday to all of you. I hope you have a great week ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that I often say that we are on a slow moving train but that train is eventually going to hit a wall it doesn't matter how slow or how fast it moves there is a wall at the end of the journey and the train will hit it no matter what it's just how much time before it hits that wall well when you take a look at this bill here where the senate just passed a 740 billion dollar tax climate package all right they're doing it for the climate understand that when i say that this is going to be very inflationary it doesn't mean that it's going to be inflationary tomorrow that is why i do these videos is because this is what's coming not only are we in, are we experiencing inflation now and i believe we will continue to experience inflation at a higher and higher rate for years to come but this is just another nail in the coffin of our economy. I believe that our government is going to collapse because the money collapses. You see, the only thing that government has in order to be able to enforce the rules that it puts upon us, whether we vote for it or not, is money. Why? Because money is what they use in order to bribe and in order to pay people to do what they want them to do. For example, here, some of the money that they're going to be raising for from this tax bill all right this is a tax bill that is going to be on you and me the middle class they're going to use it in order to enforce taxes on you and me the middle class so they're taking our money in order to tax us more and then to enforce taxes on us even more all right so let me read a little bit over here and the reason i say this is going to be inflationary is because the government has to get its money from somewhere. It does not make anything. It does not produce anything of value. So it has to get its money from somewhere. And the money that it does not get from we the people who actually earned the money into creation, it has to get from borrowing, right? Mainly from money printing. And when new money is introduced into the system, it is inflationary for you and I. In the prices that we see at the store but it is what is called a lagging indicator meaning that yes they may pass this bill today or yesterday however it may take a while for that to trickle down to us specifically as far as how much is coming out of our pockets all right so here it says the senate passes 740 billion dollar tax climate package and will go to the house next so pretty much if it passed the senate it's going to be signed in right because if it passed the senate we all know that the senate has a majority and uh actually it's pretty much even equal 50 and 50 as far as who voted on this bill uh however whenever it's a 50 50 split the vice president gets to decide the winning vote the estimated 740 billion <laughs> incredible billion uh, inflation reduction act and that's the name of the of the act of the law it's the inflation reduction act which is not law yet but it will be signed into law by the president uh, is far less ambiguous than their original 3.5 trillion dollar vision it <laughs> you see this is the game that they play they ask for a mile but they really only want a foot see ladies and gentlemen they ask for a mile but they this is how you negotiate so, for example, when you go buy a new car, if you go buy a new car, right? Just an example. And let's say that the uh, retail price on the car is $50,000. You go in there and say, hey, you know what? I'll give you, you $35,000. But inside your head, you're really wanting to meet in the middle. You're wanting that dealer to say, well, you know, I can do it for $47,000 you know, well, instead of $50,000. And then you go, well, I don't know, maybe $40,000. And then you guys meet at about 42, 43, whatever it may be, right? So you ask for a mile, but really you just want it about a foot. And that's exactly what they always do. They ask for a mile, but really they get what they wanted originally in the end. 
Let's see, the package includes provisions to address climate change, pharmaceutical costs, and supercharged IRS. Now, how is it that generating more money is going to decrease pharmaceutical costs? When other countries pay one hundredth of what we pay for medications, how is them generating more money? How is them putting more money out into the economy? How is them spending more of our money going to bring down pharmaceutical costs? Well, it's called subsidies, ladies and gentlemen. It's called subsidies. It's welfare. So what they do is they get the people hooked on welfare, whether we think it or not. For example, a lot of the things that we use every day, that we buy every day, that we need is subsidized. If it wasn't subsidized, it'd be a lot more expensive. But the problem with that is, is that they're taking people's money to subsidize things, to bring it to a lower cost. And a lot of people didn't pay into that subsidy. So they end up getting other people's labor when they did not earn it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you think about that, but that's not very fair, in my opinion, that your money and labor is being stolen from you in order to subsidize the lifestyle of someone else who did not earn that money that you yourself earned and was then taken from you by Big Brother. And here this senator from New York, I'm not going to say his name because I don't really want to say that name, says, I am confident that the Inflation Reduction Act will endure as one of the defining legislative measures of the 21st century. Well, it sure will. In my opinion, it will, but not for the reasons why he is saying that it will. Bigger government equals less freedom. Plain and simple. Anyone that cannot understand that really needs to take a look at a little bit of history and why it is that governments fail. They say here that under the Inflation Reduction Act negotiated by Senator Joe Manchin, the agency would receive $80 billion in funding to hire as many as 87,000 additional employees. The increase would more than double the size of the IRS workforce, which is currently at 78,661 full-time staffers, according to federal data. The additional IRS funding is integral to the Democrats' reconciliation package. A Congressional Budget Office analyst found the hiring of new IRS agents would result in more than $200 billion in additional revenue for the federal government over the next decade. Are they going to get that $200 billion from billionaires? See, you have to understand something. In the United States, there's between 600 to 1,000 billionaires. All right? There's between 600 to 1,000 thousand billionaires not six hundred thousand six hundred to one thousand billionaires ladies and gentlemen why do they need eighty seven thousand new agents to service six hundred to one thousand accounts they don't so who is it for well let's see more than half of the funding is specifically earmarked for enforcement meaning tax audits and other responsibilities such as digital asset monitoring. Digital asset monitoring. Not tax enforcement, but to monitor digital assets such as cryptocurrencies and things like that. So now we've turned from an agency that was put in place in order to collect the taxes due to where now they monitor accounts to make sure they're not doing anything wrong. And the vast majority of the new revenue will come from families earning less than $200,000 per year. Well, I don't make anything close to $200,000 a year. Really, what do you think is going to happen when inflation continues to go up? When, when inflation raises have to occur on a monthly basis, then a weekly basis, then a daily basis. I believe it was in June, or maybe it was one of the big banks that they gave their entire workforce a 13% raise for inflation because inflation is too high. That's just the beginning. It's go Ladies and gentlemen, the thing is, is we can't stop this. We cannot stop this. It's going to continue because they don't have a choice. Eventually, the Federal Reserve, along with all the other central banks that are in on this, all of these clowns are going to have to reverse course. And when they reverse course, when they start buying assets again, when they start printing more money, putting more money out into the economy, 
on top of all of the money that we have now that's sitting on the sideline that will eventually find its way to hard assets, to those, those things that you need to live, things are going to explode in price more so than what they have in the recent past. If you think that we're experiencing high inflation now, just wait. You better, better hold on to your trousers because inflation, it has just started. We are at the very beginning of that upward hockey stick curve that Weimar was in back in the 1920s, I believe it was. We are at the very beginning of that hockey stick. And when it starts going up vertical, it's going to do it in a quick hurry. And why is it important that we know about this now? So that you can prepare. And I'm not the only one, ladies and gentlemen, that thinks that inflation is going to continue to soar. Think Tank warns of astronomical inflation with no respite, meaning that there's not going to be any break. You know, we may have a little downturn in inflation for maybe one month or two, but in the end, it's going to skyrocket. Man, I just, I hope that people understand this. Don't take my word for it. Do your own research, ladies and gentlemen. Inflation is going to be out of control. I, if I was talking to my brother, I would say, I would tell him, I would say, get as much money out of the bank as you can and turn it into real stuff. And if you run out of room to get real stuff, meaning this, I told my wife here, oh, my wife went out yesterday and she bought extra shoes for my daughter for the next couple of years, at least. She's ordering, uh, I don't think she has yet, but she's ordering extra pants for her for the next several years so that she can have pants, jeans. Uh, and of course, I've shown you in the past where I've purchased extra boots, extra work shoes that will last me for the next few years. Another death nail in the coffin of the U.S. Federal Reserve note. I don't know why they call it the U.S. Federal Reserve note because the Federal Reserve has absolutely nothing to do with the United States. It is a private institution that is owned by nobody knows. That is who runs our money, ladies and gentlemen. The Federal Reserve is who runs, is who controls how much our money costs. They are who control it, and they are a private institution that have no allegiance whatsoever to these United States of America. How in the world is it that a privately owned institution with no allegiance to anyone except for their stockholders, their shareholders, controls the money of an entire nation. Turkey agrees to pay for Russian gas with rubles. That's another nail. That's another nail in the coffin of the U.S. dollar, of the U.S. Federal Reserve note. Why is that? Because the less need that there is for Federal Reserve notes, what happens, ladies and gentlemen? The, the less value that is put upon that note. And what's going to happen when those U.S. dollars that are not being used by other countries start flooding our shores, start coming back into our borders, adding even more liquidity, right? even more dollars to our economy? Things will skyrocket in price. Uh, our day of reckoning is coming, unfortunately. Change will come as long as the people stick together. 75,000 Brits to stop paying their power bills amid inflation storm and they're trying to make it a million. So instead of reading this article, I'll just tell you pretty much what's going on. The British are ticked off. They're ticked off. They're like, what in the world is going on here? They're waking up, right? They are waking up. They're saying, you know what? We're not paying our utility bills starting, I believe this October 1st. We're not paying our utility bills anymore. You guys are making a mess of our system. We are not gonna play your game anymore. And they're trying to get it up to a million because they believe that if they get it up to a million people that don't pay for their bills, that it will really make change in the system. And I think that it would because imagine uh, what all of these energy companies are going to do without that capital. They need that capital in order to, to survive, in order to continue to operate. Now, I don't know what the repercussions will be to the actual citizens that stop paying the bills. Like, are they going to turn off their heat? Is there a law there that says that they can't turn off their heat? I'm not sure. But here it says the resistance is growing as more than 75,000 irritated people in the UK have pledged not to pay their electricity bill this fall when prices jump again. 
75,000 people pledged to strike on October 1st. If the government and energy companies refuse to act, then ordinary people will. And the power is in the people. Entertainment companies start dumping woke content as viewership tumbles, which tells me that when the people stick together, what happens? Change occurs. You have to understand how small the government really is. All right, you have to understand how small the government really is. We have 300, I mean, we have 535 up in Capitol Hill, and then we also have two up in the executive branch. 537 people, 537 people tell the country how they should behave. And they do it with taxes, they do it at the end of the barrel of a gun, and other ways that they can manipulate the population by propagandizing them and to acting the way that they want them to act. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the markets since they should be open by now. Oh yeah, they've been open for about a couple of hours now. I haven't taken a look at them, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at them. Let's start off with the Dow Jones and look at that. It's up 189 points today at 32,993 as of 7.32 a.m. And of course the Dow should be going up, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, take a look at the law that they just passed. They just passed a $700 billion plus uh, stimulus package pretty much for corporations. That's what they passed it for. That's where the money will end up. However, this is what I think. I'm not a financial advisor. I believe that this is what's called a bull trap, I believe, all right, or a bear trap, one or the other. All right? And what that says is that uh, even though we are in a downtrend, see from here from the peak, we're in a downtrend, that people are getting suckered into the markets and then it's going to continue to go down once again. All right? So we'll see what happens. I'm not in the stock market. I think it's very immoral. If I were ever to invest in any kind of stocks or shares of a company, it would probably be in mining companies, but I'm not vested in any of that kind of stuff. S&P 500 uh, is up 24 points today, a little over a half of a percent, and it is sitting at 4170 or 4171. The Nasdaq is up about a half of a percent as well, 72 points, and is sitting at 1330. The dollar is going sideways. I think it's going to continue to go up, but we'll see. You know, I think it's going to continue to go up a lot higher than this right here. I mean, if you take a look at this pattern right here, it kind of looks the same. Oil is at $90, and oil has gone down a lot. Look at this. From June, from the beginning of June, it's gone down $32. It's gone down about 25% ladies and gentlemen but are you still paying four dollars a gallon for gas this is the u.s. 10-year bond is at 2.78 the u.s. 30-year bond is at three even and gold has gone up about fourteen dollars almost one percent and is sitting at 1788 silver is at twenty dollars and sixty nine cents up 80 cents wow uh, platinum is doing pretty well as well 949 dollars up 17 dollars palladium is at 2186 let's see the doctor dr copper is at three dollars and 61 cents the wheat futures are at 783 and look at how they've collapsed what why do you think that they've collapsed ladies and gentlemen why do you think that the wheat futures have collapsed now i'm only speculating right now I think it's because the USDA is saying that everything's going to be just fine. The USDA is saying everything's going to be just fine until we get our harvest. Then when we get our harvest, after the farmers have been paid those low prices, then this will probably go back up again. I can be wrong, but that's just what I think. Corn, this is corn, right? Yep, corn is at 611. Same thing with corn. Soybeans are sitting at 1405 same thing with them that's everything else all commodity prices pretty much are going down and uh, rice is going up because th there is a lot of problems with growing rice in the in in the world right rice is not going to have a very good crop this year so i would say get your rice now if you're if you eat rice if you put rice away get it now i see rice going up a lot more than some of your other commodities 
and here's lumber lumber is at 500 so we are at 500 with lumber so if you take the average going all the way back to 2008 it's probably around 250 even th even though this went up to 637 here for a little bit but if you take the average it's probably around 250 I don't think we'll ever see below 250 again unless we see it for a little bit and then it spikes back up then again like I said ladies and gentlemen I could be wrong and the reason I could be wrong is because I think that the housing market will eventually crash right a lot of construction companies will probably go out of business there will just be a very big glut of houses in the market you know as interest rates keep going up and that could determine the price of lumber to go down more I just think that we're gonna get stuck with lumber at a new floor all right at a new bottom that it won't go under so we'll see what happens and that's it for today ladies and gentlemen thank you very much I may put up another video later on today because there's so much more news to be talked about that I think is pretty important for us to know that I may put up another video later on today if you haven't seen the video that I released earlier this morning about the trip that I took to Walmart it looks like we live in a third world country have a great day ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for joining in and thank you for your support and thank you to all of you that stopped in on our last live stream this Sunday congratulations to all of the winners and guess what this Thursday we will be having another live stream to give away more gift cards all right so that you can use that money to prep with so I will probably release it on tomorrow's video uh, what time we're going to have that live stream on Thursday and then I will also post it on my community uh, page so that you will know what time we'll be having that live stream on Thursday reason I'm doing one on Thursday is so that people that normally cannot join in on Friday or Sunday can join in and have a chance to win a gift card having said that remember to be good to each other when good people do good things good things happen remember to reach one teach one and repeat if we all did this the world would be a better place and you know that it will be a better place many blessings to all of you and your families i'm alaska prepper i am out this is what you're getting ladies and gentlemen this is why i think nutrient survival not think but know is the most nutrient dense survival food or even food that there is in the market if you go to this tool and you just go ahead and put your cursor or your mouse over any of these nutritional items here it tells you and it compares what it is that it has along with what mountain house has so for example if i go to protein it shows that a serving of triple mac cheese has 24 percent of your daily value of protein whereas in mountain house it's 15 percent fiber as you can see 21 percent to zero omega-3s 22 percent to zero omega-6 only 7% but also compared to zero and if you go ahead and put this over anything that you have any concerns over for example sodium only 11% of the daily value per serving whereas with Mountain House you're using up 30% of your daily value here's the lasagna with meat sauce and even though let me point this out even though the Mountain House lasagna with meat sauce has actual freeze-dried meat in it whereas nutrient survival is no meat at all it's vegetarian look at this 22 percent of your daily value of protein whereas in Mountain House you only get 13 percent the maple almond crunch which is awesome I like to have it with milk and a little bit of honey compared to the oxen farms oats and honey granola same story ladies and gentlemen you are getting what you pay for which is the nutrients that your body needs every day in order to survive and thrive not just survive calories is king this is what you're getting when you get oxen farms oats and honey granola now like I said I'm not picking on any particular company I just want people to know that this is the very best nutrient dense survival food in the market so feed your freedom with nutrient survival